Ted Bundy, his story has been done to death, but we're going to approach this from a different angle. The many times that Ted Bundy proved to us that he is actually an idiot. Now, Ted Bundy cannot drive and he is still widely documented as being a genius serial killer. Having an IQ in the ballpark of 140, put that into perspective, Elon Musk is what? About 150? Now, I do believe Elon Musk can drive unless that's why he's making self-driving cars. But that's another story. Now, there is something called the Hannibal Lecter myth, basically a genius serial killer myth. In 2009, Iowa State University sought to tackle these questions. Are psychopaths truly superior to us? Do they possess a brilliance that eludes the rest of humanity? And the answer that they found was nope. As a matter of fact, they found that the opposite was true. Long story short, they interviewed thousands of psychopathic offenders and found that they displayed rather low intelligence. Maybe the actual genius ones are the ones that never get caught. Well, Ted Bundy got caught three times, so here we are. But before we get into these Bundy bloopers, we first have to meet Diane Edwards. She was his college sweetheart and she would lose interest in him after a year and a half of dating. She stated that he wouldn't stand up for himself, he wasn't strong. And this was extremely devastating for the budding psychopath like Bundy. And his victims going forward had a striking resemblance to that of Diane Edwards. So we can say that the first instance of Ted being deficient is in his emotions department. On July 14th of 1974 at Lake Sammamish State Park in Washington, Rainier Beer was holding an annual picnic and Bundy knew that there would be a lot of people there. So he formulates a plan. He wears a sling on one of his arms to appear injured. The bright idea here was to lure girls to his car with the story of helping an injured man unload his sailboat. A very simple premise, one that fortunately did not work for one woman named Janice Graham. Though she did feel bad for him, yes, followed him all the way to his car, but when she noticed that there was no boat atop it, creepy Ted asked her to get in. She says, oh, hell the fuck no and walks away. Bundy, he replies simply, oh, you know, that's okay, you know, trying to play off that he was trying to murder this woman, having still no self-awareness about how creepy this fucking approach was. He still approaches several more women with this script, of course, to no avail, until he approached 23-year-old Janice Opp. Now, she was vulnerable because she was dealing with a marriage that was falling apart. Her husband had moved away and she was very lonely. So she decided to come to the lake that day to get a suntan. When suddenly, Ted was at her side, introducing himself and runs a new script. It was something like this. Oh, it's such a beautiful day, isn't it? I have this boat back at my mom and dad's house that I just can't seem to load because, you know, this arm. Do you think you could come with me to help me load it? Now, of course, Janet is hesitant. This is a complete stranger talking to her as if he's her friend. Now, don't forget, this guy's a psychopath narcissist. He is very persistent and he is incredibly charming. So she lets her guard down and replies, okay, I'll go under one condition. I get to ride in the sailboat. And how do we know that Janice said all this? Because the lake was completely crowded. That numerous people couldn't help but overhear their conversation. Ted Bundy did this in broad daylight around countless people. And that was the last time Janice would be seen alive. Now, that same day, Ted was still itchy. And I'm not kidding. He returns to the same lake. He encounters more people, fails a few more time until he sees a 19-year-old Denise Naslin near the women's restroom. Her party was no further than 200 feet away, but Denise prior to coming to this park with her boyfriend and her friends had taken 
four Valium tablets and was impaired. She would never be seen again. Now let's go over how untactful this alleged genius was. He lures his victim away in broad daylight loudly in front of countless witnesses who would later identify her, identify him, even identify the tan VW bug that he was driving away in. Now, after killing Janice, he comes back to the scene of the abduction. How could he have known that someone didn't already call the police? Because witnesses later came forward and knew exactly who they needed to find. A shaggy haired man with a tan VW bug named Ted. Guys, named Ted. He was using his real name to introduce himself to his potential victims. Everybody knew his name was Ted. Even the dumbest criminal on earth knows you don't use your same fucking government name. And that tan VW bug was his real everyday commuter around town. Hey, Ted, you're planning on committing murders. Something like stealing a car first might not be such a big deal to someone like you. But this goes to show that if Ted Bundy was a victim of anything, it would be his own impulses. So now a composite drawing of this shaggy haired man and his tan VW bug is circulating around. And his current girlfriend at the time and a co-worker sees the sketch and reports Bundy as the possible suspect. But before the slow moving arm of justice would get to it, he murders three more women. Now this next situation in November should be on Comedy Central. So on November of that same year, Bundy decides to be a policeman. So he goes to the local mall in order to patrol it. He sees a woman named Carol Durant. He walks up to her, he doesn't know her, she doesn't know him, and tells her, your car has been broken into. Now do you guys see what the matter here was? What was wrong with the situation? Because Carol certainly did. Because for one, how in the world did this policeman know which one my car was? Was he sitting in the parking lot and saw me exit my car? Okay, that's fine. But did he also see the perpetrator that broke into my car? And if so, why the fuck didn't you stop him, policeman? So obviously, Carol was skeptical, especially because Bundy, I'm not sure if you're even gonna believe me when I tell you that Bundy didn't even bother dressing like a policeman like you just thought in your head. He was in his everydays, but like most psychos, he was able to lie extremely convincingly. He was able to wear her down and she followed him outside. To what? To his tan VW bug. He tells her to get in so that he could drive her to the police station to make a report. Unfortunately, Carol gets in and would never make it to that police station. But this grave mistake would not cost Carol her life because Ted Bundy would again do something unimaginably boneheaded. He stops the car in some secluded place so that he could pull out his handcuffs and handcuff Carol. At this point, I'm pretty sure that she realizes that she has just fucked up big time. Now Bundy continues to drive and most likely elated that he has a victim in his car that can't go anywhere and you just have to imagine his dumb face being overtaken with pure panic as he watches his victim basically just jump out of the car running into traffic flagging down passing motorists ladies and gentlemen he had handcuffed just one of her wrists don't geniuses know how handcuffs work and as dumb as that was, his dumbassness would intensify of August of the following year and we're gonna ignore the mind-blowing fact that he is still cruising around in that tan VW bug looking for victims. At around 2.30 a.m. in the morning, he was driving extremely suspiciously through a neighborhood. Well, this catches the attention of an officer, a Sergeant Bob Hayward, who pulls up behind the VW, when suddenly, the VW switches off its lights and speeds off. Now confused, 
The sergeant gives chase. The VW blows through stoplights, stop signs until it hits a main street. And then the VW's, God bless its little engine, it's not outracing the sergeant's cop car. Bundy pulls into an abandoned gas station, gets out of the car, and calm and collected says, I'm lost. Sergeant Hayward wasn't having this bullshit. He detains Bundy and checks the car. In this trunk, they find a ski mask, they find black bags, an assortment of menacing blunt objects, and handcuffs. The sergeant said afterwards that if that VW bug didn't shut off his lights and bolts off, he would have simply asked if the man was lost. Again guys, Bundy is not displaying the best brains. And guess who comes back into his life? The one that got away. Carol Durant. She would identify him as her kidnapper and with that, he would be sent to prison for the first time and given 15 years. And it was only then that the police started to link Bundy to other unsolved crimes. And like any good narcissist, at the trial, he decides to represent himself. And what is that old saying, guys? The man that represents himself has a fool for a client. But I'll give it to him. Maybe it was all part of his master plan. Because when you act as your own lawyer, you are granted privileges in the prison library. The guard only had to turn his attention elsewhere for a few moments when Bundy was in that library and Bundy was out the window. Now this is the second story. He would bust his ankle badly upon landing but was able to hobble his way to freedom. Now, if I was an FBI top 10 most wanted, don't you think that I would be a little bit more cautious? Especially while driving because I don't know how to drive. After he escaped, he makes an illegal U-turn in front of a cop. He is identified and apprehended again for bad driving. Now, we need to give credit where credit is due because this second time around, he will break out again, but this time he really showed wit and determination. So over a six month period, he begins a very strict diet and begins trading with another prisoner until he earns himself a hacksaw. With that, he would hack away around this prison grate above that leads into the vents and he would just keep hacking away at it until one night it actually came open. Now he was practically emaciated and he would fit into that shaft very comfortably. He would crawl through that vent and all the way to a guard's room. When he gets in there, he finds himself some street clothes, puts it on, and simply walks out of prison. He then transforms back into a dumbass by making his way to Florida, a state that not only loves fried alligators, but they also love fried murderers. And at this point in his life, Ted is now a reckless, downtrodden serial killer who is running out of money fast. On January of 1978, the famous break-in to the Chi Omega sorority house, where he attacked four students. He was now just animalistic, taking truly stupid risks. He would, unfortunately, in this time frame, also murder his youngest victim, a 12-year-old. Shortly after this murder, he was just driving around. And due to his, again, inability to drive properly, the police would run his plates and it would come back as a stolen vehicle. They pull him over again, asks for his license and registration, and Ted produces a fake ID. And the cop says, very funny, Ted. I only wish they said that. But the ID was so unconvincing, they had to do a check on him and they found out he was the notorious Ted Bundy. And now he would be sent to prison again, but now for good. During his new trial, of course he acts as his own counsel again, effectively giving himself the death penalty. And sadly for Ted, there were no more windows in the library to jump out of. There were no more vents big enough to fit in. But Florida has a nice chair for him to sit on. That chair sent 2,000 volts into Bundy's soulless body on January 24th of 1989. Guys, Ted Bundy isn't a genius. He got caught not only once, not only twice, but three times. Three times? For bad driving. <laughs>